Yorokobe Zashu! Alright everybody, welcome for another episode of the Fate Stay Night LP. I took a fat nap after the last one. This is the same day as the other three recordings. I want you all to know, these are all being... Every episode so far has been recorded on January 8th. The other three were all consecutive back-to-back, -back. so as you imagine, I got pretty tired talking for that much straight time. The only break I got was... When I was trying to reinstall the game and do all that crap that I said in the second episode, I believe. No, I said it in the first episode. That's gonna happen, so... Yeah, I, I just fucking knocked out and then I woke up and had some dinner and then... We're right... We're here. We're ready. Yorokobe, my Zashus. I had filet mignon. See, I already know. I am ready to embark on the continuation of our Fate Stay Night. Realta Nutella LP. Let us begin by pressing the start button. All right. I am the bone of my sword. Steel is my body and fire is my blood. I have created over stars and blades. Unknown to death, nor known to laugh. I have withstood pain to create many weapons, yet those hands will never hold anything. So as I pray, unlimited blade walks. I'm Arnold! UNLIMITED BLADE WALKS! Sorry. I'm sorry you had to witness that. Uh... But there's a consolation prize, I eat ass. Anyway, let's continue. When I came to, I was burning in a field... In a field of marshmallows that were butts. I guess there was a big fire. The familiar town had turned to ashes, and it looked like the remains of a battlefield from a movie. But this was no movie. This was the life of Emi Ashiro, but that didn't last long either. The fire had died down by the time the sun rose. The tall wall of flame had shortened, and most of the buildings had fallen. It felt strange, being the only thing in that place that still had its own original form. I was the only one still alive around here, of course. Must have been really lucky, or my house was built at a very lucky spot. I don't know which it was, but the point is... I was the only one left alive. I felt that since I survived, I should live on. I started walking aimlessly because I thought it would be dangerous just to stay there. I wasn't really concerned about getting burned up like the people lying around me. Probably because over and above not wanting to be like them, I had a stronger feeling in my mind. But still, I had no hope. It was already a wonder I was still alive, so I couldn't expect to be saved. I won't survive. Whatever happens, I won't be able to escape from this red world. It was such an absolute hell that even a small child could understand it. And I collapsed. Was it because there was no air? Was it because no function was left in my body? Anyway, I collapsed and stared upon at the clouded sky. Everything around me was burned up and I could see many shriveled people. The dark clouds loomed overhead, telling me it would rain soon. That's good, the fire would be put out once it rains. In the end, I sighed deeply and looked up at the sky. I say to myself that it hurts. I say so on behalf of all the people who couldn't even say so. And this, this begins the life and story of Emiya Shiro. That was ten years ago. After that, I was miraculously saved. My body survived. But I think all the other things about me burned up and were reduced to ashes. If you can take away... If you take away a child's parents' home and all such things, there's nothing left for him. That's why there was only my body. I think that's a simple story. In other words, in order to let my body live, my heart died. I'm dreaming. <laughs> I squint my eyes at the white light. So bright, I think. It was just light entering my eyes when I woke up, but I'm not used to it. I probably didn't even understand what the bright light meant. Huh? What the fuck? When my eyes focus, I'm surprised. I'm lying on an unfamiliar bed in an unfamiliar room. I'm surprised, but the womb is so white and clean that it feels safe. Where am I? 
I look around. The room is big and there are many beds. A person is in each bed, and everyone seems to be hurt. But nothing feels ill in this room. Everyone who's hurt is someone who was, who was saved. <coughs> wow, I relax and let my eyes wander. Outside the window, the bright blue sky was unbelievably beautiful. Just like Aoko Awazaki. After a few days, I finally understood. I could clearly remember what happened in the past few days. Even so, I was no different from a newborn baby. Not just a metaphor, it was close to the truth. Anyway, it was a terrible fire. I had been saved from it. Was in the hospital with my body wrapped in bandages. And my parents were gone. I didn't get the situation, but I vaguely understood that I was alone. I think I understood quickly. Well, there was nothing but children in similar situations around me, so all I could do was absorb the fact. And after that, that man came, right when I was beginning to worry what would happen next to me next. He came on the day my bandages were taken off and I was able to eat without help. Wrinkled coat and uncombed hair. The man, a bit younger than the doctor, felt more like a big brother than a father. <laughs> Hello, you must be Shirokun. A smile that seems to melt with the <clears throat> into the white sunlight. I think it was a suspicious voice, but a very kind voice at that. I'll ask you directly, which would you prefer, to go to an orphanage or to be adopted by this man you've never seen before? That man was saying he could adopt me. When I asked him if he was a relative of mine, he just said... He said he was just a stranger. He looked like an unreliable guy with no future. But it made no difference, as I knew nothing about either one. Him or the orphanage. So I decided to go with him. This line is so simple, but it puts a smile on my face because you can see how happy Kiritsugu is when he accepts. You can just tell. I see, that's good. Get ready then. You should get used to your new place as fast as you can. The guy quickly started packing my stuff. His packing wasn't very good, even in the eyes of a child. Then, after making a big mess... Oh, I forgot to mention something important. I have to tell you one thing before you come with me. Is that okay? He turns to me lightheartedly and says, Yeah. To start off with, I'm a sorcerer. He says it in a serious, exaggerated tone. It happened in an instant. Come to think of it, now, I was really a child back then. I automatically believed those words. <laughs> Wow, Jisan, Sugoina. I guess I said so with bright eyes. Since that time, I became his child. Actually, I don't remember what I said back then. But my father would always talk about that day. He would remember and retell the story again and again and again and again. So for my father, Emiya Kiritsugu, that might have been the happiest day of his life. So, I guess it was strange for my father to tell me that he was a sorcerer, but I was strange for, as well for admiring that. You know, it was because he didn't really save Shiro in that moment, even though he technically did, but Kiritsugu, more importantly for himself, he saved himself. Through saving Shiro, he saved himself. That was his one salvation, because, if you know, his internal monologue dialogue, it was that... He always had to sacrifice a certain amount of people to save a certain amount of people. And he had that whole dichotomy with him where he wanted to save everyone, but it was impossible. So even after that huge fuck-up that was the Grail War, the Fourth Grail War, and exploded, and Fuyuki burned down, everyone died in that area, he was still able to save just but one person. And through just saving one life, even after all of that, he was truly liberated and saved. And he was fulfilled from that, and... Really, that's deep. That's deep. I love this. I love this story, man. 
So I guess it was strange for my father to tell me that he was a sorcerer, but I was strange as well for admiring that. And thus I became an adopted son, and my last name became Emiya. Emiya Shiro. When I said my name, I was really proud of having the same last name as Kiritsugu. I'm dreaming. A story from my childhood. It was when I finally was convinced, it was finally convinced my father... It was when I finally convinced my father to make me a student. So it must have been about eight years ago. When I was old enough to stay at home by myself, Kiritsugu started to leave the house on a regular basis. He would say in his normal tone that he would travel the world and act, actually act on these words. That's how it was after that. It was normal for him to leave the house empty for a month, and he sometimes wouldn't come back, come home for half a year. <coughs> the Emi house is a big Japanese-style house, and Kiritsugu and I were the only ones living there. I was perplexed in this house at times, as it was too big for a child. But still, I liked my life here. Emi Kiritsugu would come home from his journeys and tell me lots of stories like a child, and the child who shared his last name would be at home waiting for those stories. I was always alone in the house, but that loneliness would all fade with the stories he brought back. The father, who was always chasing his dreams like a kid, his attitude was astonishing, but he always seemed dazzling to me. That might be why I wanted to be like him someday. Well, on top of that, looking at my ever-dreaming father, I felt I should become reliable myself. And thus, day one, there of 31, for Emiya Shiro begins. Hey, stay night. One, one, day one. Intriguing. Okay, let us begin. I hear a sound. I hear a heavy, old, rusty sound as the door opens. Light enters the dark shed. Ah. My mind waking up. A goddess has, speak, has spoken to me. Could this be? <gasps> Feels the cold air and the approaching footsteps. And we have Sakura. Well, I was accurate. Hmm, good morning, Sakura. Ah, yes, good morning, Senpai. Sakura smiles and nods as if accustomed to this situation. Senpai, it's morning already. You have some more time, but Fujimura Sensei will get mad if you stay asleep here. Oh fuck! I clicked on the wrong thing. <laughs> oh, you're right. Thanks for coming to wake me up. It's no problem at all. You're always up so early. I can only come and wake you up like this occasionally. Hmm? Sakura seems more upbeat than usual today, as if she's happy about something. Really? I think you wake me up quite often. The the Fujina always hits me to wake me up, <laughs> so I'd rather have you wake me up. Well, I'll try harder next time. I answer with a sleepy head. I don't know what I'm saying with my mind not fully awake. Relatable. <laughs> That's sweet. Sakura is giggling. God, I guess my head was still dozing, and I said something weird. Why are all these MCs so clueless, man? She loves you. Give me a second. I'll wake up. The cold outdoor air helps in situations like this. The chill works well to beat the sleepiness out of my head. In front of me is Mato Sakura. My junior at school. Mato Sakura-chan. Ha <laughs> XD. Uh, this place is a shed behind my house and the time is 6 o'clock. Senpai? Yeah, I'm awake now. Sorry, I guess I did it again. I have to help you cook breakfast, too. 
なら朝はゆっくりしてください。あ、uh, This is the wife that takes care of you. True wife only. Sakura says so in a happy tone. It's unusual. Sakura seems really. Really seems to be in a good mood this morning. I love how they don't directly translate the Baka comment. It just says, I can't let you do that, but it's more like Baka, idiot. They're stupid. I can't let you do that. Oh well. There's probably some reason for it. I can't let you do that. I'll get up right now, so let's go to the kitchen together. Alright, I'm all set. Let's go. So, I guess in that context, he wasn't really even saying idiot, but he, I, I don't know. It's just playful speech. I don't think too much about it. Alright, I'm all set. Let's go, Sakura. Um, Senpai? Something wrong? Nah. Oh shit, he's shirtless, bro? Alright, it's time. Okay. Uh, that said, I looked down at myself. I fell asleep while I was working, so I'm still learning my overalls. Oh. <laughs> I thought it was about to. I knew this wasn't gonna be one of those scenes, but <laughs> it was kind of suggestive in a way. Because he's like in the. I don't know. But anyway, he's in his fucking overalls. He's in the Nung Alabama clothing. Being my work clothes, they're pretty dirty. I can't imagine what Fujine would say to me if I went into the house like this. Eh, it's the morning, man. You're not out of it. Everyone's like this. You just gotta boot up a bit. It's like an old computer. Just let it be up for a bit. It'll kick right in the gear. Like an Acura NSX. Or a Camaro 2SS. Alright, that could be. So you rest here for a bit and I'll take care of breakfast. And you know, if you keep this place a mess, Fujimura sensei will get mad at you. I love the way she says senpai and hi. Those two words are like her trademarks. Senpai? And then hi? It's hard to. Do. I don't know. But. The way she says those is a trademark to her. <laughs> this is her tone and like delivery of it. Skilled voice actress. Sakura leaves. Well, I have to change into my school uniform and clear up this mess. The shed is built on the edge of our yard, and just as it seems, it's a warehouse we put all our junk in. But for me, it's a place of treasures as I've enjoyed messing with things since I was a kid. Father didn't allow me to go into the shed, but I've always sneaked in here. As a result, it became my base. For me, Emiyashiro. I guess you could call this place my real home. The big Emiya household doesn't suit me, and I can only re relax in this space full of junk. And this, have, this is what I was talking about, Shiro, in the first episode. I believe it was the first episode, at least. Like, he does not waste anything, he repairs everything that's broken. And reuses it because it's a waste to just replace everything. And I was getting into modern society just wants to replace things way too much. And I appreciate this character is the epitome of an old soul where he actually fixes things that break instead of just automatically replaces it. I'm sure if something's beyond repair, maybe, but re you replace it, but you at least give it a chance and you try to fix things that are still useful and can be fixed. Instead of just fucking replacing everything, I like the attitude of this guy. It's really awesome, and it's rare you find people like this in real life. It's chill. I also like fi I would also prefer to fix a lot of things too. The problem is, I'm not like Shiro, and I suck at handiwork. So I'm bad at fixing shit. With, the, you know, physical labor. But if I had his skills, I would fix shit a lot more. And I still do try to fix shit whenever I can, but... I suck at it. He doesn't suck at it. So he uses his ability, and he fucking... Doesn't be lazy, he has some integrity and he fixes the belongings. I like this. I like this little detail about his character. It says worlds, marvels about him. Anyway, besides the waste, even if it's junk, you can still use it. Most of the things here are appliances that can't be used anymore. Did I bring all of the junk here in here because I like the place, or did I come to like it because here because of all the junk? 
Anyway, since I was always sneaking in here, it became my hobby to fix the broken things. It's not like I get attached to things. I think it just annoys me not to use things that can still be used. It annoys me too, thank you. And just like that, I was fixing up this stove all last night. Guess I'll finish this tomorrow. It seems I don't have enough concentration, seeing how I fell asleep halfway. Yeah, that, that would be a good idea, buddy. I shake off the feeling of disappointment in myself. I gather up the parts of the stove and put them on the shelf full of things awaiting to be fixed. <coughs> there are no spaces on this shelf full of things awaiting repair. An old VCR awaits after the stove. I guess I'll ignore the fact that Fujine broke both of them. <laughs> that is very much like her. I change into my uniform. This place is like my room and it holds changes of clothes along with other things I need. It also has lots of blueprints and junk, the results of failures from when I do my training. There is also uh, some kind of old design inscribed on the floor, like an altar or something. <coughs> Summoning circle. Well, let's get today started. Clapping my hands in prayer to the shed I head for the house. And I get ready to eat some ass. I emerge from the shed. Ready to eat ass. The Emu uh, house is a Japanese style house on the outskirts of town. Mm -hmm. My father wasn't much of a respected person in town, but he somehow still had this huge house. That on its own is a mystery, but it also seems he didn't have any relatives in Japan. That's why the house became mine and no one else's when my father died. Though to be honest, I don't have that kind of management ability. Old man Fujimura is in charge of complicated things like that. Inheritance and property taxes. Old man Fujimura is the big landlord in this neighborhood. According to the father, to father, the old man's like a Yakuza boss. Of course, this is just prejudice. He's not like a Yakuza boss. He is a Yakuza boss. Well then. Well, that's a problem in itself, but I'd prefer to ignore it. It's certainly true that he's energetic and scary, but he's actually not uh, uh, that bad a person. It really helps me as he pays a lot when I tune up the motorcycle he likes to ride. Anyway, that's not why I'm the only one living in this big house. It's been five years since my father died. The days have passed quickly. Sigh. I sigh, thinking about how much I've grown in those five years. I've trained every day to be like Kiritsugu, but it's not that easy in reality. It's natural because I had no talent to begin with, but what can, I, what can be said about having no improvements at all in five years? To sum up the present in one sentence, my goal is so far away that I'm not even at the starting line yet. I guess it won't do any good to rush. For now, I have to do what I can. Well then, right now I should... Go help Sakura? I'll go to my daily routine. Huh? What do we do? What do we do? Hmm... Hmm... Do I help Sakura? I'm afraid I'm gonna trigger the Heaven's Feel route if I go help Sakura. That's the thing. Because I know you can't if you have the normal version, but if you have like a version of it with all of them pre-unlocked, and I don't know if, if my version that I got has them all unlocked, then you can technically unlock Heaven's Feel in the beginning, and I don't want to do that. Um... I don't know. I feel like it doesn't matter. But, uh, fuck, I'm just gonna be safe and go finish the daily routine. When I first played through this, I, I helped Sakura, but I'll just do the daily routine because it just seems more fate route worthy. The Emiya house has a big dojo. It was built when the house was built. It was only intended as a hobby. Well, I'll warm up a bit before breakfast. I'm not really studying martial arts, but since father told me if you want to be like me, you'll have to train your body first, it became my daily routine to work out. Alright, so I'm about to see this guy get yoked. 91. 100. What a badass. He did 100 fucking sit-ups. Like a fucking G. Average human beings can't even get past two. That's incredible. I finished my routine sit-ups and change out of my gi into my uniform. I slept in this morning, so I cut short of my workout. Some sit-ups with no stretching should be enough. I'm not the kind to build up a lot of muscle, and it's not like I want to get into a fight. All I need is enough athletic ability to handle sudden accidents and to move as I wish when I have to. When I have to. After all, the thing I want to become is the complete opposite of an athlete. Oh, this late already? 
and put the sweaty ghee into the laundry basket. It's 6.20. In our house, even this late, uh, this a late, this is a late time for breakfast. I'm sure it is, brother. Breakfast is already prepared. I can smell the elegant scent of breakfast befitting Sakura. What a beautiful woman. Look at that look. She's so cute, man. Breakfast is ready, senpai. Like, would you want to come home to this? If you say no, you are fucking insane. <laughs> Look at the optimism. Look at how sweet she is. She's going through all of this trouble to do it just for you. Go. I'm curious to see if reading the full visual novel is going to make me like Sakura more than Rin. I feel like it has a good chance of, honestly. But it's so close already, like for a period of time I actually did like her more. Because, as I said several times already in this series, she is a better written character than Rin. Rin's personality is just cool, and she's strong, and I already ranted about Rin in the last episode. So go watch that if you want to hear my rant, because I don't want to repeat it. But, let's see, let's see! Maybe, maybe when I get the heavens of Yilu, my opinion might change a little bit as far as Sakura just edges her out a little bit. Who knows, who knows, who knows? Let's see. For me, waking up this early in the morning before Sakura gets here and sleeping in is making Sakura prepare breakfast on her own, like today. I feel like you always have to read the source material to truly decide which characters you like the most. I wouldn't say always, but <coughs> really, especially for a visual novel, I think you do need to read the source. Because then you get a true idea of what the characters are. Because they cut out so much crap in the adaptations that you don't even get a real... You know, you don't even get a real look at what the character is all about. Their ideology, like... I don't know how to explain it, but you don't get the full character is what I'm trying to say. Shiro is a big example of that, and that's why I think a lot of people hate him that are anime, anime early, because they don't get his internal monologue, dialogue, and shit. Whatever. Anyway, though, this has only been a habit for a year and a half or so. Mitsuzuri is the captain of the archery club Sakura is in, and someone I have a lot of acquaintance with. <laughs> Dang right she is. <laughs> what dedication. <sighs> what a competitor. <laughs> Sounds about right. Sakura puts the rice into a bowl as she talks. It's almost 6.30. The archery club's morning practice starts at 7. It's not mandatory, but she can't afford to take it easy. Sakura hands me the bowl with a smile. And then... I'm used to this every morning, but her white fingers catch my eye. How can I put this? It's troubling. She must be maturing as she seems really feminine these days. Her casual movements are beautiful and she often takes my breath away. Her titties are fucking fantastic. Perhaps it's a re reaction to not feeling anything for her until now, but I'm noticing more and more feminine characteristics in her. My cock is fully erect. Uh, well, other than the, uh, well, uh, well, other than the erection, 
Uh, I suppose not. Oh, uh, no, nothing. Oh, I, I suppose it's, it's nothing. Is it? it no, yeah, uh. Her eyes have slightly dilated inwards. Honestly. Why am I feeling tense around my friend's sister? Why do I want to bone my friend's sister? Because she's quite bonable. She's a good underclassman and a junior I need to take care of. First of all, the relationship between me and Mato Saklacha is just that of a senpai and a junior. She's the sister of a close friend of mine, but she's a grade below me. We weren't that close. It all changed a year and a half ago into this cooperative kind of relationship. Sakura came to cook when I was injured, and after that I think we just ended up like this. I think we intended to do it until my injury healed. But some trivial thing came up to make her stay with it. Yeah, her liking you, that's not so triv trivial, buddy. Fucking bonehead. Anyway, Sucker is a good cook. It's kind of funny, I was trying to say anyway to transition into to to reading this again, but the, for the first word in the dialogue was anyway, so I kind of got thrown off for a second. Anyways, Sakura is a good cook, and perfect at cleaning and doing the laundry. She's been a big help around here, but it's been a bit troubling recently. The problem is not Sakura, but me. <laughs> wow. A blank line. Frankly, Sakura is beautiful, and my cock is still fully erect. She's one of the best looking first years, and I'm sure there are lots of guys who want to date her. God, I wish that were me. And on top of that, she's growing in certain places recently, and some of her casual gestures have started to catch my eye. Fuck, I wish that was me. Fuck, why can't I? I'm not, by the way, I'm quoting Shiro here, not myself. <laughs> That's probably what my boy Shiro is low-key thinking. He's, I feel like he's too good of a person to have those thoughts. But I feel like somewhere in the back of his head, like his inner fucking horny teenager is fucking saying those things. That's what I mean by a small problem. I'm just feeling guilty about being attracted to my friend's sister. See, what did I tell you? This dude wants to bone Sakura. Usually I'm fine, but when I'm caught off guard like this just now, I blush. Does this make me an unsuitable senpai? Nope, plenty of... Uh... Hey man, that's, that's completely normal. That means you are me. Anyway, <clears throat> breakfast is placed on the table. A perfect breakfast consisting of chicken salad, cooked salmon, spinach, radish, and carrot miso soup and yam soup. Sakura and I bow as we start to eat. At, I mean, the meal quickly, quietly. The uh, the sounds of our chopsticks echo. Sakura isn't a talkative type, and I'm not versatile enough to st talk while I'm eating. Naturally, meal times are quiet. Usually it's louder, but today the loud person is the Jaguar Warrior. She must have been quietly watching spy movies last night as she's eyeing us while hiding behind a newspaper. Fucking totally spies. Rar XD colon three. How dare you question my newspaper reading? My readingeth of the newspaper does not concern you, as I will now ignore your question. Fuck your inquiry. She's acting weird, but Fujine always acts in suspicious ways during breakfast. Sakura must be used to it as she continues to eat ass with no- I mean, sorry, eat the, the salmon with no particular care. Sakura prefers to make western foods. She learned to cook Japanese food after she started coming here to help. Fujine and I preferred Japanese, so Sakura learned to make Japanese food for our breakfast. Now she's so good that she's almost surpassed me, her teacher. The salmon is especially good and it, as it's cooked to perfection. Yeah, Sakura is a very, very smart. So that doesn't surprise anyone. So, <coughs> her miso soup is tasty and she has shown some capacity even for making yam soup by grinding yams. Actually, I think this is the first time she's made it. Sorry, Sakura. Sa Sakura. Yeah, 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 let's go with that. Sorry, Sakura. Can you pass me the soy sauce? Uh, yes. Here you go, Sampa. Your soy sauce is empty. Can you get the fucking Fujineo soy sauce, -o, please, oh? May I fucking, uh, please, ma'am, please me pass the, the soy sauce, -so -so uh, to me? She nods. And quietly, the newspaper trembles. Hmm. 
Okay, I put the soy sauce on the white yam soup. After stirring it, I put on the rice, put it on the rice and take a quick bite. Mmm, the stickiness of the yam and the taste of the soy sauce. Oh, 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 this is terrible. This is oh, oh, oyster sauce. I almost threw it back up. Regurgitation. The Jaguar Warrior has thrown her newspaper away and laughs in delight at your displeasure. She has completely fucketh you over. The female spy throws up her arms to show her happiness. <laughs> this is why Fuji made the goat dog. <laughs> what did you do yesterday? What did he do? <laughs> Imagine this is your t-shirt. This is the goat. <laughs> Fujine sits back down and finishes her breakfast quickly. Alright, bet. Serja! <laughs> okay. Bet. And she runs off. There's something wrong with the world in which that thing is a teacher. <laughs> that thing! That's crazy. Ano, senpai? あの、<laughs> this man gives no fucks, I forgot since it happens all the time. <laughs> and I was awarded the student honor written on a note paper, but I threw it away. <laughs> Fujine is like a big sister for Sakura, so she's basically on Fujine's side. That's good in its own way, but I wish she'd consider my situation where I have to deal with Fujine 24-7. Fujine was originally an acquaintance of my father's, and she's been coming to the house a lot since I was adopted. She started to show up even more after father died, and she's almost... Now almost a dependent, eating breakfast <laughs> and dinner here. No. Maybe she's why I was able to make it on my own even after my father died. Fujina, Sakura, and Naoi are now the residents of the Emiya household. But I'm the only one who knows that my father was a Mujits. It's said that Magi must hide their identities. That's why I've been hiding the fact that I'm learning magic ever since I became my father's student. I say I'm learning, but I can't even cast a single magic spell properly. With this kind of skill, it wouldn't be much of a diff make much of a difference whether I hide it or not. But because it was how my father wanted things, I've trained secretly since then. I finish breakfast and prepare for school. I clean the dishes while with Sakura while wish listening to the news on TV. Sakura is staring at the TV screen. Over the screen runs an exaggerated teletype reading. Gas leak accidents continue. It seems there was a big accident in the neighboring town of Shinto. It happened in a building in the dis business district. It seems a whole floor of people ran out of oxygen and fell unconscious. They've called it a gas leak, but this is this kind of accident is happening often recently. <laughs> Shinto 
別にそんな大きな店じゃないよ今のニュースみたいな事故は起きないと思う But it's not a risk I can completely ignore. Gas leaks can happen in any building, and on top of that, it hurts to think that hundreds of people are suffering. It's said that the accidents are happening often because of defective construction work during the rapid development of Shinto. Whether that's true or not, I certainly don't want any more victims. <laughs> Sakura boasts with pride. Yeah, I've thought so but,、uh, before, but Sakura is a bit off too. Senpai, それじゃあ鍵かけますね。先輩、今日のお帰りは何時ですか？少し遅くなると思う。さくらは。私はいつも通りです。多分私の方が早いと思いますから、夕食の下準備は済ませておきますね。うん、助かる。俺もできるだけ
それはそれで無念だが、聞き流すとしよう。Huh? ジョーが映って Why are you not happy about that? I don't get it. He's not pitying you. What's up? Why are you still giving him attitude? Well, what did I even say? Yeah, you're a bit late today. He must have been sitting. He's easy. He said, looks up from the paper he's been reading. The fuck? It keeps. We're going now. Look. Oh, what, the, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah. Law. Is this like. I have hours. Okay. Well. He said he was organizing the papers he was reading. Is the big boss of this student council room. He's the guy who's trying his best to reform the lax student council, and he's been a friend of mine since last year. First year. His name is. His full name is Ryudo Ise. Despite his old fashioned name, he has elegant features and he's really popular with the girls. And he's also the student council president, so you'd think he'd take it in like a duck to water, but. He's just sipping tea like this, so he's not that firm. As you can see, Issei has a plain personality. He's easy mis easily misunderstood, but he doesn't involve himself in love affairs nor engage in normal student recreations. It's because he's the successor of the Ryudo Temple up in the mountains. He's fine with that idea, so there's a good chance he'll shave his head when he graduates. And you're about to fix a microwave or whatever the fuck it was. It's fucking shit. Hmm. Yeah, it was a heater. Conductive wire. <laughs> ストーブ不足がどうしたってあるハイセン系の衝突だから新しいのに変えればとりあえず今年いっぱいは頑張ってくれるそうかやるなエミヤお前が頼りになると極めて嬉しいぞおかしな日本語使うねイセちょっともう少しで済むからちょっと外に出てて
That's right, M. Yashiro has no talent for magic, though it doesn't make up for it, I'm quite skilled at visualizing structures like I did just now. In fact, when I first figured out a structure and reproduced it, my father looked surprised and said, What a useless ability. I guess my strong point isn't it a useful ability. According to my father, it's already a waste of effort to perceive the structure with my eyes. For a real mudgets, there's no need to understand every corner of a structure like I just did. They say that the battle of the mudgets comes in reading the center, the core of things, in <clears throat> instantaneously, and changing it faster than anything else. That's why reading the structure is a waste of effort, as even if you do understand the structure, all you do you can do is determine where magical energy could be more easily transmitted. So all in all, it turns out that my strong point is just fi in fixing things like this. I don't have to open them up to look for damage. If I can do... If I can quickly search for broken parts and have the skills to repair them, most things can be fixed. Now that's the only case for simple things that can be fixed. That's only the case. Alright, on to the next one, boy. I packed away the conductive wire that I used and go out into the hallway with screwdriver and wrench in hand. Hey, sir. Sure you what so. In the hallway, someone else is apart, uh, apart from you, say, a girl. Tosaka Lin. I'm a bit surprised. The person talking to you say is Tosaka Rin from Class 2A. She's a lady who lives in a big mansion on top of the hill. A perfect honor student. Good looking, smart, athletic, and flawless. Faultless. She's intelligent, well mannered, and modest about her looks. People say she's the ideal woman. So it hardly needs to be said that the guys at my school treat her like an idol. Though in Tosaka's case, she's so perfect that she's considered unreachable. It's commonly believed that only teachers and guys like Issei can even talk to her. Well, to be honest, I'm a guy too. So I'm one of Tosaka Rin's admirers. Tosaka looks at us as if she's in a bad mood. It seems to be true that she and Issei don't get along. <laughs> Wow. Issei's an amazing man. Talking like that and ignoring Tosaka. Yeah, so if you guys don't know, we're basically seeing everything that happened on the Tosaka Rinde from Shiro's perspective. And this is that time where they had a little encounter in the hallway. Yeah, the AV room is next. It seems it's been working badly for a while, but now it finally died. There's only about 30 minutes until uh, left until homeroom. I'll have to hurry if I'm going to fix it. I start for the AV, uh, AV room with Issei, but it's impolite to ignore her completely when we've met like this. I turned back to Tosaka, who was standing in a daze. And then she goes, Ah! What's up with this guy? I made an honest comment. Then follow Issei. My man Shiro. That's what's up. You say heads to his seat, relieved. It's exactly 8 o'clock. The first homeroom bell is rung, so Fujine should be here in about 5 minutes. Phew. I'm a bit out of breath since we ran from the AV room. Taking a deep breath, I head to my seat. What's up, Duke Shmiknozzle? Woohoo. Uh -huh. You're so noisy in the mornings, Emya. I was wondering what you'd been doing since quitting the club, but all you've been doing is helping out Ryu. Wow, well, it's none of my fucking concern, but don't do anything to bring the club into disrepute. Okay? You're pretty uncommitted after all, huh? I'm such a fucking douchebag. Ha ha ha. Mato Shinji is a friend of mine from middle school. Is standing. A friend. Is standing in front of my seat. As you can see, his last name 
From his last name, he's Sakura's brother, who's one year older than her. No, how's it going, douchebag? Uh, of course, there's no point in telling an outsider, but it's been painful. There's a certain attention, hog left. Ha ha. Uh huh. Uh -huh. I'm squilly. Well, well, we'll better do well in the next competition. Ha ha. Ha. <laughs> You're talking rubbish. The archery club is fucking doing well because of me. You're just an outsider, and Miyashiro, so you'll just embarrass yourself if you talk like you know about it, fucking loser. Ha! <laughs> I put my bag on the desk and pull out the chair. I had no regard for his dialogue, by the way. What's that belong? You're saying you're not interested in my archery club? <laughs> <laughs> Shinji's such a fucking loser, man. Oh, thanks. I'll call you if there's anything work to do. <laughs> Peasant. <laughs> I don't think that'll happen. Oh, you fucking peon. <laughs> <laughs> Mind your own business, you're an outsider, so keep away from the dojo! Dude, he has no interest in going there. He literally could have had like a pseudo date with Sakura in the morning going to your dojo. And he said, no, I got business elsewhere. I ain't got no business with that boof, bum-ass dojo. And you talking like he gives a shit. Shiro ain't give no fucks about your boof boy-ass dojo. Shut your dumb ass up. Ain't nobody like Shinji, man. Fuck Shinji. Shinji returns to his seat in his usual manner, like a fucking douche. Yeah, he seemed even more irritated than usual today. Because he's a douche, you say? It's pretty obvious. This dude's a real friend. A fuck with Issei. All the Iseis are cool. We got Hyodo Issei and we got Ryodo Issei, alright? Ballers. Alright, I don't even, like... Issei is, in this series is kind of whatever, like I'm not... I'm not I don't really like him that much. I don't dislike him at all, but I'm kind of neutral towards this guy But at least he's a good friend man. He's chilling. Fuck that boy Shinji man. Yeah, ain't no friend old friend of mine head ass fuck Shinji You ain't gonna be a friend for long <coughs> I'm doing anything I guess she uh, should make you worry about me See, what a real friend. He's not gonna let you ruin your reputation with the women. What a guy. Baller. Even though I don't think Shinji Shiro would just randomly beat his ass in front of everyone. Well, uh, low key, uh, XD Rar, he, he has a little altercation with him at some point. If you've, uh, <laughs> But, uh, I don't really think he's short-tempered, like Issei was saying. But if he's gotta fucking throw a, uh, throw a hoomster a fade, he throws a hoomster a fade. Put it that way. As long as you understand, but it's strange, you lose your temper easily, but you're tolerant of Mato. I just kicked my trash can, so apologies for the noise there, but yeah. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> She'll fly in here. She got wings. Very true. The homeroom bell rings, and a homeroom teacher usually would come five minutes early, but our homeroom teacher isn't like that. She's Fujimura Taiga. For class 2C, homeroom starts one minute after the bell rings. Right when we hear 
I'm late, I'm late, I'm late! <laughs> and Fujine runs into the classroom. This would be the most lit class of all time. I'm not even playing. <laughs> Wham! Fujine falls over with a terrible sound. Done. The classroom is filled with silence, in contrast to the clamor from a second ago. A sudden change of atmosphere, just as you'd expect from Fujine, her nickname of Human Jet Coaster. <laughs> Human Jet Coaster? <laughs> Yo, I thought her nickname was like Tiger, or like a Tiger or some shit like that, but Human Jet Coaster. Lit! <laughs> Isn't just for show. Human jet coaster. That's fucking bees, dog. But that really was a bad hit. Fujin is on the ground, having her, hit her head on the platform. You can't see her expression with her head facing on the ground, so it gives you a bad mental image. <laughs> Scared she'll bite me. Mimic? Oh, she, she getting accused of being a fucking Mr. Mime. Okay. <laughs> they're talking like they're about to poke her with a stick instead of actually getting her help. Like, hey, is she, she alive? Poke her with a fucking twig? Jeez. <laughs> okay. In the front row, the front row is getting noisy as we're in the middle rows, we can tell what sort of ta state Fujine is in. We can't tell, so all, we all stand to look. End up to look. Someone asks, if so, the problem would be how to get her to the nurse's office. Everyone is, here is a warrior who has been with Fujine for the past year. They probably want to get out of the habit of taking their teacher to the nurse nurse's office. A brave female student calls out to her. Fujine doesn't even twitch. A sense of worry runs through the room. <laughs> How about getting her for our baseball club? <laughs> this man is saying that like that's a bad thing. If she's really dead, I'll be killed. This man is talking about some paranormal shit. And what would that be? Oh, I, I know, they're gonna... I'm not gonna spoil it, but I know what they're gonna do. Yeah, her nickname is Tiger. Her nickname is Tiger. Even though everyone said it at the same time, it's only as loud as the whisper. The tiger part is especially quiet. But still, a twitch. The silent Fujine reacts. <laughs> this is a meme. This is what made her worthy of being a heroic spirit. Everyone must be stressed from the impending exams. Even though they shouldn't, they repeat here Fujine's nickname while waving their arms. They're poking the sleeping giant, bro. <laughs> He's going super sandwich. Someone should just make an edit of her just like this with like blonde hair and gold aura going super sandwich. That would be pretty bomb. <laughs> I was like, oh, what the fuck is that? An Ozaru transformation, though? Okay. A roar of lightning. She stands bravely as if the fall has done nothing at all. Oh, 
badass. Fujine stands before everyone in her usual manner. It seems all memories from the moment she entered the classroom have fled her head. Everyone returns to their seats, chatting. Fujine starts homeroom, slowly. She chats in between the announcements, so we don't get through it very fast. ええ、6時って言ったらすぐじゃんか。海外先生、それって運動系は免除されないの。されません。それとごとくん。先生のことは藤村先生って言わなくちゃダメなんだから、次に名前で呼んだら怒るからね。はい。以後注意。ごとく
入ったなほんの手伝いのつもりだったのに3万円もらってしまった。It's about like 250 or 60, I want to say. That's a lot of money. Call it receiving a windfall, I guess. We made the big money decision, boys. Copenhagen, the place where I work today, is like a liquor store and a bar. And a lot of people are needed to restock inventory. See, this is why Japan, the goat. This man can work there and he's in high school. Boss. I don't know if he can do that in real life because they're drinking age is 20, but still. Fuck it. It's a big job that takes at least five people, and it doesn't hurt to have more help. But the boss just said to everyone in his usual tone, completely relaxed about it. But as it turned out, I was the only one who came, along with the boss and his daughter, Nekosan. Nekosan was scolding the boss, but I showed up to be a victim, defying their expectations. They welcomed me with a cheer, and we decided to clean up the storage area as best we could. And so, before we realized, two hours had passed and we'd finished restocking inventory. After work, the boss eats a brownie cake while being impressed. <laughs> he eats his rum cake. Nikosan is drinking hot sake next to him. The family is well balanced as the boss likes sweet things while his daughter likes spicy things. So. <laughs> He hands me three 10,000 yen bills, a reward unmatched for three hours of work I did. Much more than I would get for even a week's work. I hesitate, but decide to accept what I'm given. And as I'm leaving Copenhagen... Nikosan stops me while curled up in front of the heater. ガクセイに自分の仕事を押し付けるんじゃないってのよ。あのバカ。まあそれはいいとして。何じゃあ、まあ、暇だったら手伝ってくれって感じで。フルミもバカだけど、エミヤンもおバカさ。まあいいけど
No wonder there are fewer people walking around at night. It's getting too dangerous to let Sakura go home on her own. Sakura's house is in the residential area on the other side of town. Starting tonight, I should walk her home. Huh? For a moment, I can't believe my eyes. There is someone on the road, which I thought was empty. The person is standing above me as if looking down at me. You better summon it soon, Onichan. Without realizing it, I hold my breath. Silver-haired girl smiles and descends the hill without a sound. As she passes, she says something strange. I go up the hill and reach my house. As the lights are on, Sakura and Fujine must be home already. Lit dinner time. Nice peaceful music. I smell dinner the moment I enter the living room. At the table are Sakura and Fujine in the middle of dinner. It seems the main dish tonight is chicken and cream, and Fujina, who loves white sauce, is in a good mood. I return to my room. It's a fairly empty room compared to the shed, but since I don't have any hobbies, I think it's quite decorated. Most of them are random things Fujina has left here, though. I wash my hands, change, and return to the living room to find my dinner ready. Itadakimasu. I hope it's to your liking. Sakura is terribly modest. Her cooking skills have vastly improved in the past year. She has me completely beaten at western style foods and I can barely eat her Japanese f Beat her at Japanese food. Neither of us have touched Chinese. I'm pleased my pupil is getting better, but it's kind of depressing when the teacher is defeated by the student. Mm. It's as good as I expected. The chicken becomes harder the longer you cook it, so it's juicier and tastier if you roast it before cooking it, even though it's tedious. That's done perfectly here. It's a master skill, forever beyond the clumsy Fujina. That's an understatement. With that, Fujina, who had been preoccupied with her food, lifts up her head. Ack. It seems she's in a bad mood now that she's seen my face. <laughs> Even though she was happy because of dinner. もう、<笑> <laughs> I think that's abusing her authority. <laughs> this banter is amazing. それぐらいしないと I don't exactly know how she's worried as she's energetically munching down her dinner.
Hujinen laughs da uh, dangerously. I glare at them. Hujine clicks her tongue and backs down, but... They're going in on him. Sakura's taking the lesson seriously. <laughs> and I shall. See, Siro is a person who can't ignore someone in trouble. It's like helping the weak and defeating the strong. In the essay he wrote as a child, he said, My dream is to become a superhero. Hero of justice, to be exact. She's talking about things from a long, so long ago. But it's all so true, so I don't interrupt. Anyways, becoming a superhero is a goal I must not stray away from, even now. うーん、<笑><笑> Oh, you hit a nerve. <laughs> Facial expressions are gold. Ujine <laughs> crumbles. I thought she might drop her head and repent, but. Ujine asks for her third bowl. Alright. Relaxing after dinner, it's almost 9 o'clock. There's some time before my evening training. I should take Sakura home. Play with Fujina. Rest. I'll take Sakura home. I haven't thanked Sakura for dinner yet, so I shall... I'll go and talk to her. I think I should have helped Sakura in the morning, because I don't think on day one any of your choices matter as far as the plot. So I kind of regret going and doing the daily routine. I would have rather helped Sakura with the chores, but it's okay. I remember when I played through it myself, I helped Sakura, so I got to see both versions of the decision. So, it's okay. It's getting late, so I should walk her home too. This, though, I picked both times. And going to the work, I picked both times. Sakura is in the living room, getting ready to go home, having finished the cleaning. いや、風呂は友達。桜を送ってから入る。え、送るって私をですかなあ、最近武装だから家まで送る。桜んち結構遠いだろ。わざわざ来てもらってるんだから、それぐらいはさせてくれ。Sakura falls into an awkward silence. Did I say something bad? No, you clueless bump. 気持ちが嬉しいんですけど。先輩は休んでいてください。家まで出たら慣れてますし、一人でも大丈夫ですから。I right. Sakura's brother Shinji doesn't approve of Sakura coming to my place. He can't object too strongly because she says she's going to Fujine's house, but it could be a problem if I take her home. I don't care about getting falsely accused myself, but it's not good if Shinji takes it out on Sakura. Sakura is silent. Considering Sakura, she must not be able to lie to Shinji if I take her home even part of the way. A tiger striped English teacher appears. No, it's a mistake to call Fujine a girl. For starters, she doesn't head 
the archery club for nothing. Her fifth rank, uh, Don Kendo skills are dangerous in many ways. できるよ。だからさくらちゃん送っていくのも問題なし。それでいい、さくらちゃん。はい。藤村先生がよろしいのでしたら。決まりだね。それじゃ行こっか。私も今日はそろそろ帰ろうかなって思ってたんだ。and so you don't get to walk her home fujina starts to walk off taking sakura's hands saying so with a big style sakura leaves their living room I know I'm blushing. It's troublesome as Sakura surprises me a lot these days. Fuck, her titties are so huge. My time flies. She was just a junior before. Now she's a female junior to me. Ha, 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 How pitiful of me. Sakura is like family to me, so I can't accept his change. But you will. Boom. And so the day ends. Just before midnight, Emi Ashira must carry out his daily routine of using magic. I stretch out and adjust my breathing. I try to empty my mind. I ignore everything around me and pay attention only to what is inside me. As if to hypnotize myself, I murmur the spell I'm long accustomed to. No, I am really hypnotizing myself. I have no magical crest and no knowledge of magic. A spell is only a change to myself normally there lies no um there are no lines in the human body to allow the passage of magical energy to artificially change the body to create such a line i need enough concentration to unify my whole body and every nerve within it magic is a battle with yourself for instance at this very moment i am inserting a burning steel rod into my backbone this metal rod is the only magical circuit i can prepare for myself when i insert it this deep into my body I connect it to the other nerves. I can finally become a mudgets. And this is not a metaphor. In reality, something like a burning tong, which cannot be seen or felt, is being inserted into my backbone. Emiya Kiritsugu, the man who said so, was really a mudgets. A living mudgets who performed many marvels and had touched the very structure of the world. As a young child, I admired him and asked him to teach me magic. But you cannot become a mudgets just through effort. It requires born talent and appropriate knowledge. And of course I have no talent, and Kiritsugu taught me nothing of magic. He said something about me having no need for such knowledge. I still don't know what he meant by that, but still it didn't matter to me back then. I thought that if I could use magic I could be like him. But I was not born with talent. No strength of magical circuit. No accumulated works of magic handed down for genera generations. The work of magic Kiritsugu possessed, the magical crest passed down the Emiya family, can only be passed down onto blood relation. A magic crest forces a rejection on those with no blood relation. So as an adopted son, I could not receive the Emiya family's magic crest. Well anyways, as I don't even know what a magic crest is, it doesn't matter if I have one or not. So now all it comes down to is training, what I can do. If I want to be a mudgets, I have to learn magic fit to my nature. To be blunt, magic is a way to release one's magical energy. You could say that magical energy is my life force. It is divided into two forms, a large source, mana, floating around the world, and a small source, odd, created inside of oneself. It goes without saying that the large source is superior to the small one. The power of mana is on a completely different level from odd. Whatever the form of the magic, a spell using the large source far exceeds one's using one's own power. That is why superior magi excel at drawing magical energy from the world. It's like a filter. A magic turns his body into a filter, sucks up the mana from the world around him, and changes it into something he can use. This filter is what we call a magic circuit. This is the talent one is born with, and the number of magic circuits within you is determined the moment you are born. Normally, human beings do not have many magical circuits. To begin with, there are always very few. 
That is why Magi pile them up for generation after generation, making children their children more suitable to use magic. I hear some families go too far and increased in the number of magical circuits by selective breeding. Well, since I was raised in a normal family, I don't have many magic circuits. So that leaves only one method open to me. According to Kiritsugu, every person has at least one form of magic they are fit for. He said something about drawing out magical energy. Appropriate to their origin, but it didn't. I didn't really understand. All I know for sure is that even I have some magic I can use, and if I train that magic, I may become like Kiritsugu. That is why I learned only that magic. That was eight years ago. After a lot of thought, Kiritsugu finally accepted me as his student. I guess I had no fear as a child. Kiritsugu smiled bitterly, putting his hand on the nodding Emiyashiro. でも、I guess Kiritsugu didn't want me to become a Majits. I don't care about that. I don't admire Majits, I admire Kiritsugu, a hero of justice. If I can become like Kiritsugu and be there for someone like on that red day, that will be. I'm thinking needlessly. If I feel the iron rod in my backbones, I feel the iron rod in my backbones slide into place. If I lose control of my breathing now, it would be a fatal mistake. The artificial magic circuit will eat away my body and destroy it. If that happens, I'll die. I would only be an amateur, failing such an elementary step. I grind my teeth and resume the, con the connection. After a battle like walking on needles, the iron rod finally arrives deep within me and fuses with my body. This process took me an uh, about an hour. After that much time, I'm able to make one artificial magic circuit. One circuit that produces magical energy. Oh shit, I didn't read that. <laughs> I read it in my head. Yeah, basic structure analyzed after that. It becomes a project, a process of naturally flowing magical energy. And Yashiro is no mudgets. He is only a magic user. Who, create, who can create magical energy within his body and channel it into objects. So there is only one magic possible, which is... Analyze. Today's on strengthening objects, a.k.a. Harden Metapod. It is a magic of strengthening that reinforces the object's abilities by understanding the object's structure and channeling magical energy into it. I am a glorified Metapod. Basic structure, Ulta! But Metapod doesn't have to do all this magic shit. God, I wish I was Metapod. Before me is a, ma a metal pipe. I will channel magical energy into it, perform the simplest magic, and reinforce its durability. Basically, channeling your magical energy into something other than yourself is like pouring poison into that object. It is just as the blood of Emyashiro, it is not the blood of the metal pipe. Pumping different blood only accelerates its breakdown. It certainly wouldn't strengthen it. To prevent that and to turn the poison into a tonic, one must completely understand the structure of the target and channel the magical energy into small open spaces. Boom, boom. Composition. Reforce. Hokyo. It must be easy for his guild mudgets, but for me, who cannot even create a sufficient magical energy, it's as hard as hitting a target hundreds of meters away. The usual target in archery is 28 meters away. How much harder is it at that many times the distance? Goes without saying. Gah. The heat in my body quickly escapes. The burning pillar in my backbone disappears and the lungs stretch to its limits demand air. Hey. 
heavy breathing and panting persists. I arc my back to hold off the daze, almost making me pass out. Shimata. There is no change in the metal pipe. It seems that the magical energy I poured into it has evaporated into the air. The thing I'm attempting is like adding something to an already complete work of art. Adding to a complete object risks making it imperfect. Or less perfect. Adding unnecessary things will actually decrease the value. That is why the magic of strengthening is simple yet difficult, and only a few magi use it willingly. And it's not like I use it willingly either, but it can't be helped as this is the only thing I'm good at. It would be much easier if I could just form something out of clay and use it instead, but a substitute in appearance doesn't have the internal structure to match. The drunk around here is a good example. When I fail with strengthening magic, I make more substitute objects to practice and to calm down. But they all end up with nothing inside. I can visualize something structure easily, so I make, can make the outside look like the original. But it's empty inside, and of course, it doesn't do anything. I wipe the sweat off my brow. Now that I think about it, I realize my whole body is sweating like I've been drenched with a bucket of water. But I'm lucky. It just ended like this. That was really a bad idea. If I had taken a second longer to recover myself, I would probably have destroyed most of my body. It's not that e even that easy. But it is true that you won't improve your magic if you're scared of death. As long as you study magic, death is always right there beside you. Even a simple magic repeated every day can go off with a simple mistake. Taking the caster's life. Kirichigu said so sadly. Maybe he meant that he didn't want to take such a step. He didn't want me to take such a step. Yeah. Kirisugu said that to me when I told him I wanted to be just like him. I still don't know what he meant, but Emiya Shiro has become a superhero who goes around saving people, just like Emiya Kirisugu. It's not enough to understand the structure of an object with mere vision. A skilled mudget only detects what's important and channels magical energy without waste. My dream is to become a superhero. I remember what Fujina said during dinner. I don't think it's embarrassing nor impossible. It's already determined. Emiya Shiro will succeed Emiya Kiritsugu. That's why even though I'm inexperienced, I've done everything I can. I don't know what kind of a person a superhero should be, so I can only approach it by helping others within the limits of my abilities. I have aimed straight for that goal for the past five years. When things just go wrong like this, I have... <coughs> I do have doubts. Jeez, I don't get it, father. How can I become a superhero? I look up at the sky through the window. It's not like I can just randomly do good deeds. I think being a superhero is different than just helping others. I know that, but the question is, how can I become one? The difference between the two is the thing I've failed to understand for the past five years. And with that, we conclude this episode. And I'm very tired, so it is a good time to conclude it. Anyway, if you enjoyed this episode, everyone, go ahead and drop a like, comment, sub, do what you gotta do, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day, everyone, and God bless. Peace out.